On the video for removing duplicate characters from a string in C, I got this great question from Damien. They asked, is there not a better way to accomplish it? The runtime complexity of that algorithm is going way into quadratic. Would be interested to know if there's a more efficient way to solve the problem. So let's go over a more efficient way to remove the duplicate characters from a string in C. So if we have a string like this with many duplicate characters in it, we'll have some A's, B's, C's, some more A's, D's, and E's, we would say that all occurrences of a character, except for the first occurrence of a character, are duplicates. So all these A's here and all these A's here are duplicates. All these B's here after the first one are duplicates. All these C's here after the first one are duplicates. We want to remove these duplicate characters from the string. We'll make a function to do that. We'll call the function void remove duplicates, and the function will accept a string as an argument. The function has a void return type because the function doesn't actually need to return anything. We'll also include a couple libraries to help us out. We'll include the string.h library, which includes the string length function strlen. That will help us find the length of the string. We'll also include the stdbool.h library that allows us to use the bool values true and false. Then in our main function, we'll call remove duplicates and we'll pass it the string s to remove the duplicates from the string. Then we'll print out s after the duplicates have been removed. So we'll have percent %s backslash n and then s. So this is what our original solution to the problem looked like. We'll paste it in here and we can see that we have a loop with a loop inside of it with a loop inside of it. Let's try it out. We can save, compile and run the program. And we see the duplicates have been removed. We're left with A, B, C, D, E. So the function does work. And this approach to solving the problem is one of the more common solutions that you'll see online. I think because it's a bit easier to understand for people that are newer to programming. So the way the algorithm works is that the outermost loop is going to examine each index in the string from the first index all the way to the length of the string. The loop that's inside of that loop is going to examine the remainder of the string and try to see if any of the characters in the remainder of the string are duplicates of the character that the outermost loop is currently examining. So the outermost loop could be looking at this character here. The loop inside of it will be examining the remainder of the string from this index onwards to check for duplicates to this character here. Now, when a duplicate is identified, there's another loop and that third nested loop is going to actually shift over the remainder of the string to delete the character that has been identified as a duplicate. So we have a loop inside of a loop inside of a loop. We call that situation a triply nested loop. There's a whole area of study called computational complexity that's all about how and why some algorithms are better than other algorithms. But in a nutshell, why that's bad is that if we have a loop inside a loop inside a loop, we're potentially going to be executing the innermost loop body many, many times. So if we have a for loop that has a counter variable i go from zero up until some length, that means the body of the for loop is going to occur length many times. I've written the loop as pseudocode here, but the idea is the counter variable i is going from zero up until length by one. And therefore this body will run that many times. But if we now have a loop inside a loop and they're both going to run length many times, the inner loop body is actually going to run an exponential amount of times. We have length times length, number of times that body's going to run. So if I have a for loop here with i going from zero up into length, and we have a for loop inside of it, and this for loop is also going to run length many times, that means this body here is going to run length times length many times because this loop runs length many times, but it itself is going to run length many times. So we have length times length for how many times this body is going to run. Now, if we have a loop nested inside a loop, nested inside a loop, and they're all going to run length many times, that innermost body is going to run length times length times length many times. So there's this exponential effect 
when we have a loop inside a loop inside a loop. So for example, if we had a length of, let's say 10, then this would result in 10 times 10 times 10 is equal to 1000. So the innermost loop body would run 1000 times. So if we had say small string lengths, this wouldn't really be a big deal. But let's say we had a string length of 1000. At that point, we're going to have 1000 times 1000 times 1000, which is going to result in 1 billion. So the innermost loop body would run 1 billion times. And the exponential effect is really felt as we increase the length of a string. This is a big oversimplification of what's going on in our algorithm, but the general principle holds. This is the general idea. So we don't really like algorithms where we have loops inside of loops inside of loops, if we can avoid it for this reason. Let's try to create a more efficient algorithm. It would be really nice if we could solve this problem by only passing through the string once, by only having a single loop loop through the string one time. And it turns out we can do that we're going to use another technique that involves using an array to keep track of which characters we've encountered so far, as well as another counter variable to help us overwrite the existing string with a new version of the string. Let's solve it that way now. So we'll delete this and we'll delete our original solution to the problem. And the first thing we'll do is find the length of the string because we're still going to need a loop to loop through each index of the string once. So we'll have int length is equal to strlen string. So the strlen string length function is going to return the length of the string, not including the special null terminator character that ends the string. We're going to store that returned length into the length variable. Next, we'll create an array of bools to keep track of which characters we've encountered so far and which characters we have not encountered so far. We're going to use this to identify duplicate characters. So the array will be called car underscore found, and it's going to be an array of bools. It will be length 256, and we're going to initialize all these bools to false, because false is going to mean that we haven't encountered the character yet, and when we first start reading the string, we haven't encountered any characters yet. Now the way this array is going to help us is that we're going to take advantage of the fact that characters are represented with integers. So for example, the character lowercase a is represented with the integer 97. The character lowercase b is represented with the integer 98 and so on. In the extended ASCII character set, we have 256 possible characters and those characters are represented with the integers from 0 to 255, which is going to be exactly the indexes of this bool array here. So if we have car found at the index lowercase a, this is actually going to be car found at the index 97. So we can use this to set a Boolean value false or true for each possible character. So we could set this to true. If for example, we did encounter the character lowercase a, we could also check it as well. So we could check to see if we've encountered the character lowercase a. Now our loop is going to have a counter variable i, and we'll be looking at the characters in our string at that counter variable. So at the index i, if we do have the string at the index i here, this will let us know whether that character in the string at the index i has been found or not. Let's implement this algorithm now. The first thing we'll do is create our loop. So we'll have four and then int i is equal to zero. i is less than length, i plus plus. We're also going to have another counter variable. I'm gonna declare a variable j and initialize it to zero. We're going to use j to overwrite the original string with the new string with the duplicates removed. Next, in our loop body, we're going to check to see if the character at the index i is a character 
that we have not yet encountered. So we'll have if not car found string at the index i. So what we're doing here is checking if we haven't found this character yet in the string at the index i. If we haven't found the character yet, then the character is not a duplicate and we want to include it in our string. We also want to acknowledge that we have now found the character. And we'll do that by having car found at the index string at the index i is equal to true. So now we've acknowledged that we have found this character and in the future, if we encounter this character at the index i in our string, this if statement body will not be entered because this condition here will be false. The other thing we need to do is actually put the character into our new string. Now we're going to put this character into our new string by using our counter variable j that we're using to overwrite the existing string in place. So we'll have string at the index j is equal to string at the index i. So we're going to overwrite the existing string right in place using the counter variable j. We're only going to increment j whenever we encounter a non-duplicate character like this. We will increment j by one here because we do want to write the next character at the next index. Now, when this is all done, we're also going to have to put the null terminator character into our string to terminate the string. So we'll have string at the index j is equal to the special null terminator character that terminates the string. And we've put the null terminator at the index j because j has kept track of the length of our new string that we've written over top of our old string. Now, if we save, compile, and run the program, it's going to work. We get A, B, C, D, E, the same as before. But this algorithm is going to be more efficient in terms of performance because this algorithm only makes one pass through the string. We would say that this algorithm is going to have linear performance because as the length of the string increases, the effect on performance is going to be linear, not exponential, as in our other algorithm. Now, we could say that this algorithm is less space efficient because technically we're using this extra array that we didn't have before. So this algorithm does require more space. And that's a trade-off that we might be willing to make or not make, depending on what's more important. Let's trace through how the algorithm works once to ensure that we understand it. So let's say we have an example string and the example string has the characters A, B, A, and D, followed by the null terminator character that ends the string. These would be at the indexes 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the string length of the string is going to be 4. I is going to start off at 0. J is also going to start off at 0. Let's trace through each step of this loop. We've also got our car found array that's keeping track of which characters we found so far. So car found is initially going to be false for all characters. So A will initially be false and B will initially be false as well as D. So B will be false and we'll also have that D is false. And those are the only characters we really need to worry about. So we'll just represent those. Now in this first iteration of the loop, when I is zero, we're going to be looking at this character here at the index zero, it's A. This if condition is going to be true because not false is true. Then in this if statement body here, we're going to set car found at the index of the character lowercase a to true. So we'll have true here. We're also going to set the string at the index j to the string at the index i, and we're going to increment j. In this case here, both index i and j are zero, 
so it really has no effect, but we will increment j to 1. And i is going to increment with every loop iteration, no matter what. So now, in the next loop iteration, a very similar thing is going to occur. We're going to be looking at this character now, at the index i, which is 1. The character b also hasn't been encountered yet, so the exact same thing is going to occur. We're going to set this to true. j is going to be incremented by 1. i is going to be incremented by 1. And technically, we wrote b into this index here, with string at the index j is equal to string at the index i. But again, that had no effect, because i and j are still the same. But here, now when i is 2, we have a duplicate character. So we already have encountered a. That means that car found at the index a is true. Not true is going to be false. This if statement body is not going to execute this time because the condition is false. That means with this loop iteration, the only thing that happens is that we increment i by 1. And we now have 3 here. Now we're looking at the character at the index 3, which is d. In this case, car found at the index d is false. So the if condition will be true, and we'll set car found at the index d to true. This time though, when we go to write the character in the string at the index i to the string at the index j, j and i are different. So we're going to write the character at this index, 3, to this index, 2. So d is going to be written here. Then j will be incremented and i will be incremented. At this point, the loop is done because for i is no longer less than the length. The last thing we do when the loop is done is put the null terminator at the index j, 3. So it's going to go right here. This will give us the string with the duplicates removed. And that's a trace through of the algorithm to help us understand how it's going to work, especially how the string is overwritten in place. So this is how we can more efficiently remove the duplicate characters from a string using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.